An Elio's original. Welcome to part two of our Flat Earth episode. Here's our interview with Mark Sargent. Hi. We can hear you. We can hear you. Hey, there we are. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Cheers. Um, so we just have so we're doing an episode on flat earth and kind of the whole movement. And we know you're kind mm-hmm. of like the king behind it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the champion of the movement. So we would love to just like ask you, um, some questions. Yeah. First things first, how did you get into the flat earth movement? Uh, sheer boredom. <laughs> that is how I got into it. Like, not, not kidding. Uh, no, no. In 2014, uh, I was a pretty boring summer. And if you are a techie, yeah. and I never got married or had kids, so I had a lot of free time on my hands. <laughs> so I'd gone through pretty much the A to Z of all conspiracies. Yeah. And in 2014, everybody knows about Flat Earth. Everybody's heard of it. I've never run into a single person that said, oh, Flat Earth, what's that? And I said, oh, do I have to look at this? Fine. Fine. I'll look at it. You know, that you remember that line from Ferris Bueller, you know, totally. He'll keep call, he'll call, he'll call. <laughs> and so I did, and I said, and after I thought I could knock it out in a weekend, and I couldn't. Mm. And then weeks went by, and I was kind of pulling on these threads. I was going, oh man, this thing, I really shouldn't keep doing this. And nine months later, February 2015, um, I had my Jerry Maguire moment. I just woke up in the middle of the night and I said, you know what? I'm going the other way on this. I'm going to put a series of videos out there saying, I absolutely can't prove the globe anymore. I think it's flat. Shut me down. And put my contact information, which was so, so smart. (laughs) That's how we got you. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. And then five years years later and three books and a documentary and commercial and all this other crap. And yeah, here I am. Wow. So... If you could like in layman's terms or just your elevator pitch, what is your justification for flat earth or your just like dismissal for for round earth? Okay. The the short okay, I'll give you the the hopefully super short version. I know you you guys are pressed for time. Oh no, we're not I, we're not pressed for time. We just want to be respectful of your schedule. Okay, well hang on. Get my pack of <laughs> afternoon of this. All right, so the the short version for anyone who's never, ever heard of this is that you are not living on a tiny little rock that's flying through space at impossible speeds in a ridiculously huge universe. You are living in a building, basically a structure, a Hollywood soundstage with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and it's so big that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until about 1960. And when they did, they said, you know what? Civilization's already built. There'd be too many ripples, too many shock waves that would go through. Let's just keep a lid on this thing, so to speak, for as long as we can. Uh, the bit you want the my my top five arguments? Yeah, for yes, Great. absolutely. Okay, top five arguments that I that I threw. In fact, I'll give you the the top five that I gave to a, a Georgetown physicist. There was a, a German television team. It says, "Oh, we got this guy for you." It's like, okay, so he goes. He goes, but we're gonna because scientists are notoriously dry. You know, one syllable, two syllables. Yeah. Two. Except for Neil Tyson, um, Brian Cox, and Michio Kaku. They're all really, really boring. <laughs> not Bill Nye. So, Bill Nye's a fun guy. <laughs> yeah, but he's not really a scientist. He's got a bachelor. Mm-hmm. But, but you wouldn't know that. He's got a bachelor's in mechanical, and that's it. And yet he is on every freaking panel from the Mars rover to global warming. I, don't know, I could spend an entire day on <laughs> oh, it. Wow. It's not. We'll have to so, have you on again. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> If you wish, sure. <laughs> and so there was this um, physicist in Georgetown and the German uh, television team said, okay, we're going to record you asking five questions and then we're going to take that video and give it to him. That way you guys aren't talking over each other. And in fact, you guys will never talk. It's like, all right, fine. I, I suppose that's one way of doing it. It's pretty smart. So they said, come up with five things that, that you think could stump the physicist. And it's like, okay, here we go. Ready? Long distance photography. Uh, if the curvature of the earth You're looking off into the distance. One of the most common arguments is, well, we see boats going over the horizon. They go over the horizon because, you know, 
that's it. There's the curvature of the earth. It's eight inches per mile per mile or eight, eight inches per mile squared, which means at three miles, it's three times three, which is nine times eight is 72 inches. At 10 miles, it's 800 inches. And at 50 miles, it gets really out there around 1,700 feet. So you shouldn't be able to see things that are shorter than, than that when you, when you get out that far. And yet we can. What's really changed, it's like, well, why haven't we seen this for years and years and years? HD technology, HD cameras, basically. Beforehand, you know, I know you guys are all super young. You're all what, in your mid-20s. Uh, that's Thank very you. kind of you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I am. <laughs> but I, what is it, just blurry? I can't tell. <laughs> Whatever. So... So off in the distance, um, HD, if you had a VHS camera back in the day, you know, you just zoom in on something off on the horizon, just get really, really blurry. But nowadays it's come, becomes crystal clear. Well, that's a problem. If you're looking off at something, you see a boat at 30 miles, you know, it's a fairly small boat. That boat should be on the other side of the curb. It should be on the other side of the hill. And that's not the case anymore. In fact, we put the, 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 the proposition to anybody in science, like show us any object that's less than 150 miles away that we can't see. That's number one. Uh, number two would be gravity versus the vacuum of space. Yeah. Right. You drop something, you know, this little cap right here falls to the ground, right? Why? Because of gravity. Well, there's a problem with that. And that is the atmosphere, what you're breathing in now, right? It's oxygen and mostly nitrogen. It's 80% nitrogen, a little bit of trace gases, right? So let's a little thought experiment for you. Let's say there's a second floor and everywhere you are, there's a, there's a ceiling above you and maybe something above it. Let's say you put a, a small vacuum chamber above you with a little valve and you pop that valve. What happens? Instantly, violently, the air will equalize right off the bat. It, you're, the, the air in your room will go up there. Okay. Well, why? Well, because the vacuum is very, very powerful. You know, you can do that, you know, even um, taking a soda, you know, sucking a soda out of the bottom of a, a glass, right? Why, why doesn't the soda stay in the glass? Well, because the vacuum force that you created from your mouth, it goes into your mouth, right? Vacuum, nothing beats a vacuum. It's very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem there is when you go outside, why is our atmosphere still here? And you say, well, because it's gravity. It's like, really? Because there's a huge, huge, huge vacuum force supposedly in space. And yet our atmosphere stays here. And you're going to say, well, it stays here because of gravity. I go, you mean the same gravity that couldn't hold the air in your room instead of going upstairs? Maybe. He got me there, guys. He got me there. <laughs> I, 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 got, I got three more real, real quick. These will be shorter. Uh, third one is an eclipse shadow. Uh, if you saw the documentary, you would, have, yes. you would have noticed this. The moon is supposedly 2,000 miles wide, and yet the blackout zone that crosses wherever you're going is only 70 miles wide. Really, really, really small. It's like 90-something percent smaller than the, the, the moon. And they say, well, that's because the shadow convexes down into this. Like, it's like a magnifying glass, only with shadows. And it's like, okay, uh, that's, that's fine, except that we don't see the opposite of that. Meaning the Earth is supposedly 8,000 miles wide, and that passes in front of the sun. Why don't we see a blackout zone on the moon that's only 250 miles wide? We ever see that. We either see the whole thing blacked out or we, go it in, we see it in red. The thing should turn into a giant eyeball and we don't see it. And it makes much more sense in our model because we say the moon and the sun are only about that wide. Uh, fourth one is a real weird one, but you guys can test it yourself. Um, the moon temperature is cold. And I know it doesn't make sense when I first say it like that, meaning the moon generates a cold light. So if you're in the sun, you guys are, are you guys all in, all in California? Yeah, yes. Los Angeles. You might want to get out of there before the end of the year. <laughs> it's going to get really, really weird. But that's a whole other topic. Why? What's going to so, happen? What's, uh, what's going to happen? Mark, what's going to happen to us? What? No, I'm just saying <laughs> that, um, that, that depending on, you know, how the election thing oh, goes. Well, yeah. the, oh, sure. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to turn into the whole. I know you guys aren't old enough to remember the whole Rodney King thing. But I mean, there were like a thousand fires set in Los Angeles during Rodney King. You know what? Let's back, back to the thing. <laughs> so the moon is a cold laser light. So what happens? So if you're in the sunlight, let's say it's 90 degrees in the sun. Well, it's 80 degrees in the shade. Why? Because whatever object blocks it in the shadow, it, it's cooler in the shade. Always, 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 right? Yes. Yes. Except when you're in the moonlight. It's the opposite. So if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's actually 60 degrees and up to like a, like a 13 degree swing. It's warmer in the moon shade. Well, that's, that's impossible because, remember, the moon is supposedly reflecting some of the sun's light. At the very least, it should be neutral. It should never, ever go negative and not by that much. Last but not least, question number five, which was, um, 
Are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no? Van Allen, Van Allen radiation belts announced by NASA around 1958, 1959, actually 1959, say that there's these huge belts of radiation around it, super, super deadly. Can't go through them. They announced that in 1959, said it shouldn't go through them. And then the space program ended up going through them. So if you say the answer, are they deadly? Yes or no? Well, if they are deadly, then how the Americans go through round trips from the 60s through the 70s with no shielding really whatsoever. You know, the only things that can stop radiation are gold, lead, and a whole bunch of water. We use plastic and aluminum and nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. There's still five of these guys limping around today. Right? And you say, well, no, okay, they're not deadly. All right, well, then I tell you to go to the NASA.gov website and look up a little video called Orion Trial by Fire done at the end of 2014 where they said, we can't even test our Mars capsules because we haven't solved the Van Allen radiation belt problem yet. What are you talking about? You solved it in the 60s and the 70s, and then you quit in the 70s. You solved it perfectly without any flaws whatsoever. Anyway, those five things I threw at the physicist, and he folded instantly like a card table. He said, yeah, we're not doing this. And the Germans packed up and they said, yeah, we can't run the segment. That, that's it. It was done. It was over. And no scientist has ever addressed it ever, ever since. Ta-da. Good night, everybody. Roll credits. <laughs> that's crazy. And, but, but that was part. Let, let me let me throw more. Yeah. That, those questions were kind of part of my journey when I was going through this thing. I loved the globe. Mm -hmm. I collected. I was, I was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I collected antique globes like off of eBay when I was growing up because I thought it was such a cool, cool icon. So when I got into this, I absolutely did not want to believe in any of this. Right. I was like the hardest case ever. And so what I tell people is says, can I prove to you without a doubt that the that the world is, is flat? No, I can't. If, if I could, I'd be the most famous person ever. Right. But can I create, we'll use doubt again, can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to term is some sort of flat model. Yeah, I can. And you say, well, reasonable doubt isn't enough. I go, oh, yeah, it is. If you've ever been in court, reasonable doubt is a very, very strong thing. And that's where everybody is. Everybody in the community says the same thing. We can't tell you exactly all the details. We do not agree on all the details, but everybody agrees on exactly one thing. We know it's not a globe. Interesting. There's my elevator pitch. Sorry, it was so long. No, that's that was perfect. So I have I have a question. Like, and so maybe when you said like the reasonable doubt thing, that answers it. But you you had said in the documentary, it's like a you know planetarium kind of like snow globe Truman Show type thing. Whatever works for you. Yeah. Yes. So um, who or what is running it, or like what is this? What is it enclosed in, or like what is this dome, or does that question even make any sense? You are the probably the quickest person to ever go to that level so basically it's like well who built it yeah <laughs> really is it really gonna go that far okay um i'm not going to offend anybody who who doesn't go to church of course nobody's really going so to is it right is it god like is that is that the presumption what you can well you, that's just it you can only go one of two ways right. it's either an older we had nothing to do with it let's let's get that out of the way right now okay. we none of this this is so far beyond our engineering capabilities the best we can hope for is the Truman Show type thing, maybe a 20-mile wide stru structure, which basically takes up an entire section of Los Angeles. It's not a real thing. I know it's a movie. <laughs> in fact, you guys are old enough to remember that movie? Oh, yeah. yes. We're, yes. We're, 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 we're in our 35. We're in our mid to late 30s. Not, we're not in our late 30s. We're not in our late 30s. You don't have to lie to make <laughs> friends. It's okay. All right. So I know you want to relate. But no, no. It's, so, so you. it's either... If it's not us, it's either an advanced civilization that's much older and much more powerful than ourselves. Okay. Or the divine. Mm. And really, at that point, you're kind of splitting hairs, aren't you? Right. Because one man's advanced tech is another man's deity. Yeah. I mean, come on. Let's face it. If a giant golden spaceship all of a sudden landed in Paris, you'd have two groups of people that would show up. It's like one, one group would be like, holy smokes, they do look like the people from Avatar, you know, and, and more, you know, all these nerds would be geeking out and the other, the other group would form a church immediately. Yeah. Um, I have another question that's kind of like off the subject and then I'll get back on the subject. Um, what's your, what's your vibe on like, uh, Illuminati slash like simulation thing? Like, do you think we're living in a simulation? Like is the Illuminati like controlling things? Like, any any okay the, do i do, yeah there's, there's two questions there yeah uh, one do i think the illuminati are controlling things no you could ask any conspiracy person 
their top 10 groups of who could be controlling the world. And I guarantee you, you will run into arguments between people. No, the conspiracy world is just, that's how it should be. True power stays hidden. Right. Is it the Illuminati? Is it the Bilderbergs? Is it the Council of Foreign, Foreign, um, Foreign Relations? Is it the Rothschilds? Is it... So it just goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. Right? So do I think any of those groups? No, I think they're all they're all part of a basic shell game. Mm. Um, do I think it's a simulation though? That's a really really good question. Thank you. Because <laughs> I would, no, it is. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you asked that. So many people don't ask that, and there are a lot of people in science have been leaning over the last ten years that there are indications that this world appears to be digital. Yeah. In fact, I would love to say that this world, you know, I would love to go into the, to the, um, tell people that it's, you know, it's some sort of matrixy 13th floor type thing, but they just don't get it. Look, the matrix is 21 years old now. Right. Wow. Right? It's been a while and it just didn't. I know. Right. So old. <laughs> Time flies. <laughs> and <laughs> when you guys were two, just we babies. Came out. <laughs> Yeah. So it, it, but, but I can't do that because it just, most people still don't get it. They don't get the whole virtual reality thing, but let me throw out two things for you real fast. You guys can look this up or your listeners can look it up. Yeah. One of course is the double slit experiment, which some of you may have already heard of, or maybe mm -hmm. not, which is uh, otherwise known as Schroeder's cat, otherwise known as uh, particle versus wave. Which means, and we only learned about this after we started building simulations. So you've, you've heard the thing when you were growing up in school, probably, um, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's sure. around to hear it, does it make a sound? You've yeah. heard that one, right? We know the answer to that now, which is no, it doesn't make a sound because it wasn't, it's not being rendered. <laughs> it's not being drawn because there's no one there to draw. There's no one, if no one's there to witness it, you don't bother drawing it. Huh. Um, you guys probably don't play a lot of games, but every simulation that we make follows the same rule, whether it's Fortnite or GTA or Warcraft yeah. or whatever it is, uh, which is if there's, if you have a character that's going to go on, that's never going to be on the other side of that mountain, do you draw the other side of the mountain? No. Mm. no why would you? You're going to waste resources. You don't build the world. You only build the world around that character. Whatever It's called flashlight graphics. Whatever you see, that's what's being rendered. Yeah. Why is that important? When you start building simulations, you start to realize, you start to question your own world. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you start building, as you start building simulations, all of a sudden you start looking around going, huh. You know, start knocking on walls and crap. Right. <laughs> and and you know, it's real. And what we found out in the double slit experiment is that when, you look, when you're when you not looking at something, it's like, you know, you ever done that thing where your friend's not looking at you and you make a face at them and then they turn around, you're, you're, you're stone cold, yes. you know, right? That happens to us all the time in the physics world. So with your, basically, whatever's behind you right now is not being rendered at its full capacity. It's not being drawn as clear as it can be. And they, they scientists figured this out accidentally. So what was happening was they were they had a camera. They were firing these particles through this freaking wall, and they turned the camera off, and the particles started going off in different directions. B basically, they were they were acting like a wave. And it's like you talk about it, turn turn the camera back on and start acting like a particle again. Huh. And it, basically, it is what we start do we we are doing in simulations. Yeah. But the other thing, I let me throw this at you real quick. Yeah. Um, which is the goes into the simulation thing. Look up uh, an experiment called neuroscience versus free will. Brilliant experiment. Okay. Scientists get bored. They stick electrodes on people's head and sit them in front of computers and, and monitor their brain waves. Right? Not they don't go into their head. Just tape things <laughs> off. And they were saying, okay, uh, we're going to put electrodes on your head and you're going to hit a number on the keypad. We're going to watch your brain waves. And they said, okay, also just for the heck of it. We're going to have you pick a number, but as you pick that number, before you even hit the keypad, watch the time and set in tens and set and, and tens of seconds, right? So if you think of the number three, right? Just then you thought of the number three, right? Well, this is where it gets weird. So you're about to pick a number, pick a number nine, right? Mm -hmm. The computer knows when you were going to pick the number eight seconds ago. Whoa. Because it can actually see the brain waves be ramping up. And you're saying, well, that's impossible. I just consciously thought of that number for the first time just now. It's like, no, 
No, it's not. And, and science has a really, really hard time with this because they were the ones that came up with it. And because what it does is it screams predestination, yeah. which goes into it. And I'm sorry, I'm talking so much. No, I love which it. Is, which is this. Are you living in a virtual reality or something that I came up with a few years ago, which is, are you living in a virtual movie, which you already made the decisions before you came in? Right. So with virtual reality, it's this random thing. You log in and you're interacting with people. And it's all live as it happens. Well, that's probably one of the most inefficient ways to get entertainment ever. What you really want to do is you lay everything out and you say, okay, I'm going to do this and, this and this and this and this and this and this. And then just before you go in, that memory is suppressed to where you don't have any memory that you came in. And, and did this. And to you, everything's live and everything's wonderful. And it's like, holy smokes, it's great. But you actually made the decision before you even walked in. I'll give you one more thing. You guys are into films, that sort of stuff? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll give you a quick, quick one here. Imagine this. Imagine you're a director, Orson Welles type. You have complete creative control, right? Screw the producers. Wait, are any of you guys producers? No, sort of. But Melissa's okay. screwed a few producers before. <laughs> so, so screw the producers and you have complete creative control. You control editing, you control casting, you control everything about the movie, right? Yes. yes. Orson Welles had the chance to do this when he made uh, Citizen Kane way back in the day. He's one of the only directors to ever get away with this. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And you make your movie exactly the way you want, right? You shoot it, you edit it. It's just about to re get released. And then you bump your head on a door and you have amnesia, and you forget you even made the movie, mm. right? You go into the theater to watch this movie. Well, everybody else, they're watching movies, go, yeah, it's a movie. But to you, it's the greatest movie ever. Right. Because you chose everything. You're like, wow, I totally would have cast that person. I totally would have made that editing. The music's perfect. All this stuff. Because all you had to do was suppress yeah. the number. Have you heard of the Akashic Records before? Yes, but remind me. Okay, so this is, I mean, it's a similar idea, but it's like a new agey idea to what you're saying about this movie thing. But like the Akashic Records says that our soul predetermines, like there's like this book of records where everything that we're, everything that we have done and everything that we will do in our lifetimes is already predetermined and pre-written. So like when, yeah. when our soul goes into a lifetime, our whole life has already been determined for us that we've already chosen it, that we've like kind of signed up for it. So then we go, right. we, we don't remember what our life is going to be going into it, but we enter into it and our life is already like predestined for it. Perfect. Ab absolutely yeah 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 absolutely um there was um there's what's that old saying you can't have your cake and eat it too right very similar to this and people say well it's a dead metaphor it doesn't mean anything it's like no no it does it's not that you can't have your cake and eat it too it's that you can't have your cake eat it and still have your cake right meaning if you came into this world knowing in advance what was here what was your previous what previously yeah this world would mean nothing people would just start throwing themselves off of bridges like lemmings the first time anything got hard yeah mm -hmm. right well the third season of westworld is kind of what you're talking did you do you watch westworld i didn't watch the third season because it, everything just well, started it was shitty it was ever supposed to, yeah uh, but the third season of westworld was this concept where like the the program that determines our fate kind of malfunctions and everyone finds out what their fate and their destiny is and it leads the world to chaos because everyone knows like when they're going to die what's going to happen to them in their lives and everything like that so it's like what's the point of living when you already know exactly what your life mapped well, out right. is going to be since we are going down this road <laughs> i totally detoured the conversation i'm so no, sorry. no 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 it's fine no what hell I, let's let's do this <laughs> let's do it since we're going to go down what let's because eventually you're probably going to ask this which is what is the meaning of life yeah sure let's do sure. it what's the meaning of life uh, Sergeant, <laughs> why? Why not? Because it'll. We can segue into that. Okay. And if you want to go back to do flat Earth stuff, that's fine. Which is, which is, people say, well, okay, well, why were we here? If it's, if it's virtual and it was created, and you could sort of do a flat Earth thing on it. Which is okay. Why? Why was it built? Yeah. Imagine this, because I and my answer has always been the same. Which is, this world is really unique. If you look carefully, it is ninety nine point nine percent conflict. Meaning, it doesn't matter how beautiful how talented how powerful how rich you are which i'm sure you guys are all of those things <laughs> yes. you still have something to complain about yeah i mean you have a 110 room mansion you're complaining because people are making long distance calls 
you're, if you're if you're an, an, uh, a model, you're constantly looking in the mirror. If you're if you're rich, you want more money and power, more power, and so on and so on. But well, the the sense of contentment in this world is few and far between. So, what if the world outside of this was ninety nine percent freedom or unlimited? Let's call it unlimited, where you can do anything, right? And the only limits actually are your imagination. I call it the wish machine. And you guys, I, the, I throw this at people every once in a while, which is, uh, let's say you had a wish. I get, I'm a genie. I give you three wishes. And you're clever. You think, oh, I'll wish for more wishes. So you do. Fine. It's like, fine. I, you, get, you want your million wishes, you're never going to be able to go through them. Never. No one's ever made through a million wishes. Eventually, though, the genie keeps coming back to you. It's like, it's like what's your next wish? Eventually, you get bored. And then the, the, you're, you come to the genie and go, oh, man, I'm out. I'm so tapped. I got nothing. And it's like, what, can you help me? And the genie goes, yeah, yeah, I can actually. It's like, what, what? Well, there's this place you can go. It's the exact opposite of this. It sucks. It's going to, it's this misery and suffering. And you have to stay there for like 70, 80 years, give or take, depending on your level of suffering. Well, and, and it's like, oh, that doesn't sound fun. It's yeah. But when you get back, you will, you will relish this place. Like it's brand new. Mm. We're almost brand new. And it's like, what's the catch? The catch is, you're not going to remember you asked me that. And it's like, you know, you give him the, the okay, he snaps his fingers, and here you are. And it's cyclical. And, and I know different religions have talked about that in, in, different, in different ways. But that's what I kind of feel it is. You know, you go here, conflict, conflict, go out, and unlimited. And back in and conflict. Yeah. I can understand that from some perspective that like maybe our purpose here is to like learn gratitude for whatever is beyond this or something. What you just said, it's, it's learning. It's like a school. You know, this place can only be one of three things. It's either entertainment, confinement, or educational. Well, it can't be entertainment because not that many people are having fun. (laughs) Or is there something bigger than us that's having fun? What is something bigger than us entertained by us? Could be. Absolutely. Why waste it? Efficiency fu- functioning on multiple levels. Sure. Why the hell not? I don't know, man. Hey, everybody. It's Allie and Melissa. And we want to tell you some more about Feels. Our favorite CBD that you can get delivered. The world is on fire right now. And one of the ways we've been managing our stress and anxiety is with Feels. It's natural, there's no hangover or high, and it works in minutes. If you're having trouble sleeping like me, here's what I do. I put a few drops under my tongue and then go through my nighttime routine. By the time I'm getting into bed, I'm already feeling less stressed and anxious and I'm ready for a good night's sleep. Feels is a great company and they want to help people who are new to CBD. So they even have a hotline you can call if you have any questions at all. It took me a little experimentation to find my perfect dose. And now that I have it, I'm loving the fact that being a member lets me get it delivered to my door every month. I don't have to put on a mask to go to the store. It could not be easier. Feels has me feeling my best every day, and it can help you too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash web crawlers, and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash web crawlers to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. That's feels.com slash web crawlers. Okay, Melissa, you asked a question about Flat Earth. I've taken, I've derailed us in a big way. <laughs> Your fault. Okay, I know, it is my fault. Back to this Flat Earth thing, now that my <laughs> <laughs> okay. living a simulation. So yeah. I guess my main question is, like, you seem like someone who is really into experimentation and getting results. Like the whole flat earth community is really into let's prove that the earth is flat. Do you think yes. is there at any point or any experiment that could be done to where you would f- actually believe the earth is round? Like, is there any experiment, any point that could prove to you? An excellent question, which has been posed to me before, which is, is there anything that we could do to change your mind? Is there anything <laughs> yeah. out there? Yeah, there's two things two things actually one one you're never going to get to both of them it's going to be really really tough to have i mean i've i've asked these for a couple years now um the first one is take any camera 4k camera is that where we're at 8k camera whatever they have 
and put it on the side of a capsule of a rocket, point it down, you know, at the at the landing pad, launch it, and show it, you know, the world will eventually, you know, like it was supposed to leave orbit, like that Tesla was supposed yeah. to do, <laughs> but no one saw it. So, and then eventually the Earth would form into a globe, and that's it. Like, you know, it heads off to wherever you think it's going to go. It's never, that particular camera footage has never happened in the history of space travel. Like, if you yourself were to go with NASA into a, into yeah. like up into space and you saw it for yourself, I'd quit tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Interesting. yeah, I absolutely would. Um, I well, one, I'd do it if they if they would do it for me, although they won't send Neil deGrasse Tyson or Brian Cox or any of those guys. Would I absolutely do it? Sure, sure I would. And would I quit Flatter tomorrow if if I went up there and it's like it's a globe? Sure, sure I would. But they're not going to send me, right? In fact, it's never it's never been even hinted at. N- nobody in my community has has been right. ever hinted at. And they could squash this thing in two seconds if they if they wanted right. to if they decide to do it. But, but I know what would happen. They'd make me sign a waiver <laughs> that said, "Oh yeah, by the way, we control all your press releases at this point, and if you don't go along, and it's a national security deal, and we can." lock you in a room and throw away the room. <laughs> the other way though, which is why I came up with option number two, which is the spacesuit challenge. You don't even have to go up in a space capsule. You want to get me to renounce flat earth? Tell me how a spacesuit works. And you're saying, well, what are you talking about? I'm going, well, I don't care about the oxygen or the CO2 scrubbers or the heating or the cooling. All I care about is how a spacesuit defeats the vacuum of space. It's like put Anything in a vacuum chamber, right? If it's if it's brittle and it's pressurized, it'll burst. Like put a soda can in a in a vacuum chamber, it'll blow up. Put a football, basketball. There's only one soft thing ever, soft fabric thing that has ever done the opposite, which is a spacesuit. It's it's a soft suit, and yet it doesn't turn into a parade float. I mean, it should literally turn into a rigid plate, uh, parade float and then burst, and and they should die, and it doesn't. And the reason why they got away with it is because the average person, you guys, I'm sure, are all PhDs and everything. Absolutely. But the average person is, doesn't, we, we go through school, we're not taught anything about physics or engineering or chemistry or microbiology or any of this stuff. We, 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 to the very, very minimum. And that's what, so the spacesuit, my, my challenge was get me a freaking spacesuit. I put it out there for years. I go, I go, you don't have to give it to me, just loan it to me. Put me in a vacuum chamber, flip the switch and tell me what happens. Of course, I'd love it if somebody else went in with me. You know, I don't want to just sit in there alone. But at the same time, how does that work? And you say, well, okay, what does that prove? What that proves is if the spacesuit, I did a, a video called um, The Lost Nail, which talked, you, you remember the old nail story? It's like for the loss of a nail, the shoe was lost, where the horse was lost, and the knight was lost, and the battle in the war. Blah, blah, no. Blah. No. <laughs> You've never heard no. That? Never. Yeah, it's a famous it's a famous thing. Look it up. The lost nail. It's a great it's a great short thing which basically says um don't discount the small things because it could lead to a chain reaction to bigger things. Butterfly effect. It's, yes, exactly. It was one of the early early butterfly effect things. And yeah, but the Ashton Kutcher movie <laughs> which I still love. Um but anyway, if the spacesuit is wrong, then everything tied to it is wrong. So if the spacesuit is a lie, then anytime you ever see a, saw a spacesuit is also a lie. And in fact, uh, after I'm done, I'll, I'll send you a um, just a simple Apollo 12 shot that yeah. was taken in 1969. High def, you can zoom in. There's so many things. In fact, in fact, you know what I'll do? I'll, while you're thinking of the next question, I will email it to you from my other thing. Do it. So it seems like the vacuum is the main is the main tripping point in terms of this flat Earth theory that 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 seems to be a real hurdle. It's it's got to be this. It's it's number two on the list. Number one is long distance photography. Number two though is the vacuum. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have a question though for the the camera pointed down thing. I mean, there are plenty of videos of rockets with cameras pointing down, and then you seeing the not leaving orbit though. But no, no, no. There there are there are. It's funny you'd mentioned that. You are absolutely right. There are cameras that point down, but they're always like on the first or second stage of the rocket. I don't know why. You know, when they get up to the first stage, either it kicks off and it spins away or it's on the second stage where it kicks off and spins away. With The, ex- the only notable exception is the uh, Tesla Roadster in space, which for whatever reason, they never showed it. So they followed booster one, booster two, and then they cut to car. It's like then you, all you saw was the, the shot of the car. And I'm going, where's the Falcon Heavy? Where's the, where's the rocket delivered? Where's the thing that was tumbling down? Where's all the footage that from the launch? 
where was the video from the capsule? It's never, there's never been in the history of space travel a video from the capsule looking down. What's the, what's the problem with the space suit? We'll, we'll, we'll put this up on our Instagram and our Twitter. So go through the... the you mean with that photo or just... With the photo, the space with everything. Okay. Tell us the problem. Okay, so this photo is... And remember, this is an undoctor, just a random shot from Apollo 12. There are plenty more like it. Okay. Uh, first off, you guys in the photography at all. Sure. Uh, one light source, one light source. Shadows go in one direction. How many light sources on the moon? There is one because it's the sun. How many directions is the shadows going in? Four, <laughs> at least. Why is that? No one wants to talk about it. Uh, second thing would be all the footprints, except underneath that giant rocket nozzle, which supposedly landed. That thing's got 10,000 pounds of thrust. At least what the specs say, there's no blast pattern. There's no splay pattern underneath that thing. I'm not even, I, wouldn't, you know, I won't even get into the no stars in the background thing. There's no stars on any shot on the moon ever because they say, well, it's an exposure setting. It's like, fine. I know you keep hyping about the exposure settings. Didn't you think you'd take at least one roll with the exposure setting set so you could see stars? But no, the astronaut said, no, we never saw any stars. The reason why there's no stars ever is because mathematically back then it would have been way, way too hard. I honestly, I give them credit for that. So do, who, do you think someone made this on like their computer? Do you think that this was like on a soundstage or what do you think? Oh, soundstage. Okay. Soundstage. Absolutely. I have, I have, I just have a question that it, it's been like bugging me. It's just that at, at a time where believing science is like very critical to our species, like global warming and like there's so many conspiracy theories, so many like QAnon people like, do you feel yeah. like you're being anti-science at a time where we really need to be scientific? Because there's so many, uh, there's just 2,000 no, years. That's, that's, yeah. but I, I'm glad you asked that. Nobody is, in the hundreds of times I've done this, I've never gotten that question asked to me, ever. Oh, wow. Uh, I am not anti-science. I love science. I mean, we're talking on science. Look, I grew up in the tech field. I taught proprietary software for 20 years. However, what I don't like is... And I, I shouldn't even, I, I shouldn't even be so critical because I would have done the same thing. I believe that power corrupts, and but I also believe in what's known as the greater good. And you've heard that many times, and that is, do the ends justify the means? No matter what the means are, does the end goal justify it? If you knew in 1960, if you figured it out in 1960 that this world wasn't what you thought it was, would you tell the public? It seems like an easy answer at first. It's like, well, truth, we, we need to tell the people. You know, people have the right to know. It's like, yeah, but then you look at what might happen, right? I mean, by 1960, everything's pretty much, the concrete has dried. You know, civilization, we've got, you know, you, you would basically create huge amounts of upheaval in universities. The stock markets would have to be suspended. Oh, and the main five religious houses of the world, uh, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhist, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity, you're all telling them to show restraint and not go after science. So I'm, I'm kind of mixed with that, with that question, which is, look, I'm not anti-science, but at the same time, look, I call it as I see it. And that is, I'm a, I'm a big believer in plot holes. That, that's my, one of my things. I will watch a movie. You, we've all done it. We watch a movie. We're invested in the movie. But then they keep screwing up the writing. You know, it's like, oh, why did they do that? And that's out of character. What, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, enough of those. And eventually, like, I'm just not into this movie anymore. You either turn it off or whatever. And as I was looking at this, as I was watching, you know, our space program and everything tied to it and how our Earth was defined, I just started looking at the plot holes. And eventually, it's like, I couldn't take it anymore. It's like, all right, here's what I see. <laughs> you know, I, 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 and so I'm not trying to deliberately do anything against science. I'm not. Uh, but at the same time, I, I can't, I just can't, I'm not going to let it go. I, I mean, there's some people who are like, oh, it's fine. I mean, I've literally had people say, fine, the moon mission is, is aged terribly and it doesn't look real. But you can't tell me that the ISS is absolutely fake. I'm going, why, why would one be real and the other be not? If, if one is fake, then everything is fake. But so. Well, it seems like we're all after the pursuit of knowledge, however, however one finds it. Um, We've kept you on for like an hour when we meant to keep you on for Has 20 it been an minutes. Hour? 
Yeah, I don't know. We just we just shot the shit. I I took us off track. I'm so sorry. No, that was me. I I got into my simulation zone. Um, Mark, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for coming on. We really we really appreciate your time. Hey, uh, and can I can I ask you guys one thing before before? Um, of course, before I go? please do. Um, how did you find me, or what 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 prompted the doc you? the documentary where we do uh we do like conspiracies and true crime and uh anything oh, cool. off off uh off the beaten path that we find on the internet or tv and so on and so forth and uh, we all watch the uh the flat earth documentary and, and then you went to the youtube site and found my email yes correct Cool. <laughs> and then we, we well, hunted no, thank, you down. Thank you, thank you guys. You had, seriously, you guys had some, you guys had some great questions. <laughs> and I in, enjoyed all of them. Oh, good. Thank you. Including, thank you uh, for the, coming on. We appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Okay. Well, awesome. Thank Thanks, you so much, Mark. Mark. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. And I think I think that the best way to deal with this is his issues is the photography thing and the vacuum thing. So I think if we can prove, if we can either one, get them up in space, or <laughs> I think we have to start a, we have to get a Kickstarter to get them up send in space. Mark to space. We have to send Mark to space. We have to get a scientist on, you know, Bill Nye. Bill Nye came to my wedding. Yeah. So we have to get Bill Nye to explain a space suit to him. don't talk shit about Bill Nye. Bill, I love Bill Nye. Or so we have to get Bill Nye to just explain the space suit, space suit or the vacuum thing to mark and then mark will get on our side this is why i was this is why it's important to to have a relationship with mark because mark said he would if if he could get straight facts about earth being if he could get his mind changed he said that he would flip the dime he said that he would go on team earth i don't believe him because i feel like when they were doing like the gyroscope experiment with that twenty thousand dollar laser they're like this will prove and then we have another experiment it proved them wrong but they were still like no nah, i see some flaws i feel like he will have an excuse if he goes into space and i feel like there are videos of spaceships going into orbit are there not well that's what i because i found a couple but he's i mean i don't know they stop after a little bit i guess but the tesla the video was live the whole time. But he said you can't get that footage. He just needs the spacesuit or the vacuum. Well, why don't you marry him? God damn it. Yeah, marry him Well, because I'm, I'm not a flat earther. Yeah, that's true. That's so sad. The saddest love story <laughs> of all time. It's like two <laughs> ships passing in the night. Um, <laughs> and one falls off the edge of the earth. Uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> 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 um uh, i do like his simulation ideas though i mean like people are i mean I, we talked about my brother even had some oh, weird yeah. simulation ideas yeah, yeah. um scientists are more and more believing it's a simulation i don't know if i believe that i think there yeah, is something weird going true. on but i don't know so i was trying to i was reading about theories on why people do believe this kind of stuff and there's this thing called the dunning kruger effect Yes. And it's a psychological finding that people who don't have knowledge or expertise about something tend to have a false confidence that they are, in fact, very knowledgeable about something. Like, they're too ignorant to realize that they're not smart enough. It's like an ignorance of ignorance. Well, it's like a delusion of grandeur. Like, I'm smart enough to realize that I don't know everything about physics or whatever like i recognize that i can't explain gravity or whatever like i'm smart enough yeah. to not realize that but people who believe this they think that they are smart enough and they do have all the answers that's like well this- that's why i'm always que- i always question like everyone like anyone that's like this is this is the way it should be and like it's just like that's why i believe scientists it's why i believe scientists but not politicians yes politicians are liars <laughs> You know what's crazy is we are living in a simulation, though, because I was looking at this um, mental hospital in Chicago (laughs) from like the the late 1800s, like the last two days I was looking into it. And you just said the word Dunning. The name of the institution (gasps) is Dunning. Yeah, we're in a simulation. So this is like I do. Oh, so now you're changing your tune, Melissa. I do think that there is. I do think that there is some sort of simulation thing going on. Like there's too many like coincidences or, or I do think yeah, that that's it's, like, yeah. I do think we have the ability to some sort of like create our own reality. I certainly don't think we live in a flat earth, but yeah. I do think that there is some sort of like 
psychic reality. I just think it's like it's it's okay to be skeptical. Like that's great, but when you find the results, you can't deny them. Like if it's yeah. scientifically proven over and over and over again, and you start making excuses, that's like, well, then you're not. You don't believe in science. Yeah, that's the, the whole science is like experimenting and finding results. That's what science is. It's the method, baby. That's the scientific, scientific method. method. Uh, we kn- we know what we have to do. Stay in solution. We got to get him to space, or we gotta <laughs> we gotta get Bill Nye to to. To explain the vacuum or the spacesuit to we him. We gotta make <sighs> shirts that say send Mark Sargent to space. So if you have any like ideas about like flat earth, what's going on, uh if you know how spacesuits work, <laughs> vacuums, not the kind that women use because we belong cleaning houses. <laughs> since i famously hate women (laughs) any of that stuff i mean i think we just want to firmly take the stance that we are like pro-science we um think the earth is round but we are open to other ideas and seeing other people's points of view so that we can try to change them for the greater good and we thank mark for coming on to tell his viewpoint even though Melissa's steamed. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Melissa's <laughs> fine. She has smoke coming out of her ears, but she's fine. fine. She's like a cartoon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's fine. She's a cartoon um, ball. What's the name of that? Oh, no, what's the name ball. of that? The rap. That's the name of the rap. That rap. That flat earth rap. Anyways, um, I'm Allie, uh, the Matrix Seagull. I'm Melissa... The Sims Stutton. And I'm Maria um, Westworld Blasucci. <laughs> Westworld season three. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Original. Powered by ACAST.